hi there, this is Brother Craig. Today I'm going to bring you another short broadcast in the series, What's the Big Deal? And we're talking, of course, about divine healing. Now, if you would, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell while you're at it, then share this with anyone who needs a positive, encouraging word. Also, I want to invite you to send your prayer requests to ambassadorministries.org. There at our website, you'll also be able to access our entire video library. And of course, all of that is free of charge. Now, again, the series is called What's the Big Deal? This is part seven, and we're talking about divine healing. I shared yesterday that one of the reasons that divine healing is such a big deal is because people are in such desperate need. And yet, that being true, and we all acknowledge that, healing has been sidelined in so many of our church circles and among Christians in general, even Christian leaders that apparently think it's simply not that important. Oh, they say it might be important as a sign to point somebody to receive Christ, but it's not important all by itself. To that, I would strenuously disagree. When you're hurting, it's a big deal. When you're facing expensive surgeries or therapeutics that you simply don't understand, believe me, it's a big deal. And we need more than sympathy prayers. Oh Lord, be our brother, be with our brother as he goes through this grievous overly expensive and totally unnecessary procedure so the doctor can take a long vacation. Sorry, I know we don't really pray like that, but you know, we might as well. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I've given you a number of reasons already why div divine healing is so very important. Here's number seven, because Jesus commanded it. Because Jesus commanded it. If you think I'm making it impossible for you to disagree with what I'm saying. You're absolutely right. How can we disagree with something that Jesus commanded? Well, we shouldn't. And we should stop making excuses and learn. Praise God. We talk a lot in church circles about discipleship. And we should. But what's our model for discipleship? Well, it's Jesus himself. Jesus modeled discipleship with his own 12 closest disciples, the apostles. When he called his disciples together in Matthew chapter 10, he gave them authority over unclean spirits and over every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. That's exactly what it says in Matthew 10 verse 1. He got more specific when he told them in Matthew 10, 10, 7, and 8. That's where Jesus said, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. And then he said, Freely you have received, now freely give. And he wasn't talking about money. He was talking about the kingdom. If you just read it in context, you see that he's talking about the kingdom of God. Freely, you've received the kingdom of God. Freely give the kingdom of God. So healing is a part of the kingdom. Now, there's some that will say, yes, Brother Craig, he said that to his 12 disciples, but it's passed away. Really? Then why did he reiterate that in the Great Commission? When he said in Matthew 28, verse 18, that all power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Now, what does that mean to you? All power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Now you go therefore and do what? You teach all the nations everything that I've taught you. <laughs> Praise God. Now, that would have to include... Matthew 10, 7 and 8. When he uttered the Great Commission, he was speaking to his disciples, all of whom he had taught the healing ministry. And this wasn't just an apostolic thing. 
Mark 16 talks about signs that follow believers. In Mark 10, 10 uh, no, excuse me, Mark uh, 16, verse 18. Jesus said that believers would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, it's almost as if we've taken that scripture and we've made it like a prophecy rather than a command, you know? Actually, it's a command. It's command form language. It would be like when my kids were younger and I would say, you're going to get into the kitchen right now and you're going to clean up the, the, uh, the di you're going to clean up the, the dishes and load the dishwasher, you know, something like that. That was not a prophecy. I wasn't saying at some point in your future, you're going to do this. I'm saying you're, you're going to do this and you're going to do it now. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, if they ever treated it like a prophecy, there were consequences. Now, it's clear that Jesus commanded healing to be a part of the ministry of the church today. We observe other things. We never forget about tithing. We don't leave out the importance of worship and preaching and about baptism. Some don't even forget about evangelism. Some even talk about deliverance from demons. But are we ministering healing to the sick? I would suggest that if we're at all open-minded about this, then we'll have to admit Jesus commanded us to heal the sick in his name. And I would suggest that one of the reasons that we're shy about this area is because nobody's ever trained us. And that's why we make available training materials. And if you want to be proficient in ministering healing to the sick, you need to get a hold of this manual. This is called the Divine Healing Training Manual. And in it, you will find 15 lessons. This is no real light read. This is 56,000 words, which is more than many books that you've read. But there's 15 complete lessons, a lot of supplemental material. And it's all designed to change your mindset relative to divine healing. And that's the whole point. That's how we disciple people in the ministry of divine healing is to help them change their mindset. Praise God. So if you'd like a copy of the divine healing training manual, we do request a, a donation of $20 or more per copy. If you possibly can, we do everything on, on a donation basis. If you can do more, that will help us print more of these materials and we can disciple more believers in this area of the Great Commission. Praise God. And that's postage paid in the USA, by the way. If you're somewhere else, you can certainly inquire. So praise the Lord. Now, just remember, my friend, that if you're born again, you are God's ambassador. You're his representative on the earth. Praise God. Bye for now.